Hey guys, welcome to Jack's Beautiful You. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about October's perfume tray. I'm gonna do a little recap for September's perfume tray and let you know what perfumes I was loving for September, what perfumes I was not loving for September, and then we're gonna pick out 10 new perfumes to focus on for October. I love doing monthly tray videos. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jackie. I do mostly perfume, beauty, and makeup on this channel, and I would just love it if you would subscribe and just become part of the family. And also, if you'd head over to Instagram and follow me over there, I do a lot of stuff on Instagram as well that I don't do on YouTube. So that is also Jack's Beautiful You. Without further ado, let's get into this video. First up, we're going to talk about New York Nights by Bond Number no. 9. I enjoy this perfume so much. I think this is a perfect transition fragrance from hot weather to when it starts to cool down a little bit. This is a floral gourmand. It has floral notes in it, but it also has coffee and it has caramel and it has a lot of gourmand notes in it. So I do get the gourmand aspects of this, but there's also floral notes in here that I can make out as well. To me, this smells like banana bread and coffee and flowers. So I find this one super enjoyable to wear. It's not too much to wear when it's kind of warm outside, but it also fits for cold weather. And I am gonna put this one away for a little while because I've been wearing this one a lot. This is one of my most worn perfumes the last couple of months because I've just enjoyed it so much. And yeah, I highly recommend you check this one out if you like semi-gourmands. Okay, I also had by Tom Ford Velvet Orchid on my tray. I just had this decant and I am going to be honest with you guys, I didn't wear this one time. I sprayed it on the back of my hand once, but I am just so not in the mood for this fragrance right now. I really am craving those sweet gourmand fragrances. When it gets to fall and I think of October and November, I start to think of Thanksgiving, Halloween, holidays, and I just want my sweet, yummy, delicious gourmand fragrances. And this is more of a serious fragrance to me. This is a serious, maybe wintertime fragrance. It's a nice enough fragrance. It has some rum in it, it has some honey. It definitely has some florals, a lot of florals in the mid. The base is vanilla, myrrh, suede, sandalwood. It's just not doing anything for me. You know what I mean? It's like a nice, good fragrance that doesn't do anything for me. So this is definitely not going to be a full bottle. And I don't honestly even know if I'm gonna keep this decant because I've had this for a while and I just can't seem to get myself to wear it. So don't be surprised if you see this in an upcoming declutter video, but yeah, I just don't think that Velvet Orchid is the fragrance for me. Up next we have by Kaoli. This is Citrus 08, the travel size, and I really wanted to get through this bottle in the month of September, but I was not successful. Not because I don't love this fragrance, because I do. This is a beautiful fragrance that I have fallen in love with that I didn't even like when I first tried it, but I absolutely love this fragrance now but I'm not in the mood for this now you know this is definitely like a spring and summer fragrance to me anyway the citruses are very prominent obviously it's called citrus 08 but yeah like these citrusy summertime scents are just not doing it for me right now like I said I want those cozy warm rich decadent gourmands right now it's what I'm craving so I do love this perfume I do recommend it I do get pretty decent performance on this one as well and yeah, I, I'm going to go ahead and just put it away. I'll take it back out when spring comes around and then I'll get a full bottle at that time because I'll be in the mood for this again for sure in the spring. She Loves Red by the House of Dua. This one hit the spot for me in the month of September. This is a dupe for BDK's Rouge Smoking. I really contemplated getting a bottle of Rouge Smoking. I had a decant of it, absolutely loved it, but the performance was not great on me. So I found out there was a dupe from Dua. I got it and loved it. And the performance is so much better in my opinion and also it smells almost exactly the same as Rouge Smoking. This smells like a very cherry coke to me like a coca-cola and some people get root beer out of this which I do understand that I can understand where people are coming from but for me the cherry is so prominent that it just smells like a a cherry cola and I really love it I think it's super fun to wear and I was so in the mood for this one this is a brand new bottle and I did manage to put a pretty decent dent in here definitely recommend she loves red by the house of Dua another super fun fragrance that I enjoyed so much in September was by Zadig and Voltaire this is her this is such a fun fragrance and I got compliments on this one I wore this one a few times in September and I forgot how much I just loved this perfume it's whipped cream and chestnut that that's the two prominent notes that I get out of this and then in the base 
it's sandalwood. Like this is a heavy sandalwood fragrance, but when I first spray it, I get a lot of whipped cream and a lot of chestnut, which is just fun. And then yeah, in the dry down, it's this really smooth, creamy, beautiful sandalwood that I absolutely love. So if you love whipped cream, if you love chestnut, if you like sandalwood, I highly recommend this one. I did put a pretty good size. There was a little bit of a dent in here already, but I put a little bit more of a dent in this fragrance. And this is a great affordable option. Really good performance. This lasted on me all day. I didn't have any issues with it at all. I couldn't remember what the performance was on this because I hadn't worn it in a little while. So super enjoyable this month. And that is by Zadig and Voltaire. This is her. Very briefly, I will touch on Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. I'm actually wearing this one today. Even though it is October, I haven't actually switched out my tray yet because I just now had a chance to sit down and film. I didn't have power for about three days because I live in South Carolina and we were, we were hit actually head on by Hurricane Ian. Luckily for us though, it was a category one by the time it got to us. So there wasn't a ton of, not like Florida, you know, it's not anything like what the people in Florida have experienced. Here we had some damage, we had some trees down, we had some flooding. So we were without power for a few days, so I wasn't able to film. So I wasn't really concentrating on my perfumes at that time, as you can imagine. And my heart does go out to anyone affected by Hurricane Ian or any of the, like Hurricane Fiona. I know some people are still recovering from that. And if that's you, my heart just goes out to you. My thoughts and my prayers are out to you. Just, I pray for a speedy recovery for you. And I just pray for your health and your safety. Back to this fragrance. This is Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. I talk about this one all the time, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. I'm wearing it today. I absolutely love it. You know, it's one of my favorite perfumes of all time. This is just a sweet, jammy rose with saffron and pink pepper. There's sandalwood in here, which I love the sandalwood that's in here. It just makes it smell really smooth. There's also some musk, amber, and there is patchouli. This smells like a beginner Middle Eastern fragrance, in my opinion. It's not it doesn't have oud in it, but it kind of has like a Middle Eastern vibe that is easy to digest, if that makes sense. So I just adore this fragrance. I think it is absolutely gorgeous. So that is by Kaeli Sweet Diamond Pink Pepper. Another fragrance that I absolutely adored, and I don't even know if I want to stop wearing it. I'm not going to put it on my tray for October, but I kind of want to, is by Elizabeth and James. This is Nirvana Amethyst. I forgot how much I love this. This is so good. I'm not even really the biggest tobacco fan. I'm trying to get more into tobacco because I'm actually discovering that I like tobacco a little bit more than I thought. So I'm kind of getting there. I'm getting there. But I, you know, tobacco is kind of a tricky note for me. This has cedar in it as well, which I thought woody notes were kind of tricky for me, but I'm starting to really love woody notes as well, I'm discovering. And there's honeysuckle in here. So to me, this is the most wearable tobacco. This is excellent quality. I mean, it smells like a high-end fragrance in my opinion, and this is super affordable. I think I got this for like 20 something dollars, and it's just so good. Now, I do know a lot of people complain about the performance of this one. They say that it's terrible performance. Luckily for me, I really don't have that much of an issue. I put it on and I can get about five hours out of this fragrance. It's not super strong or anything like that, but I can smell it. I mean, I get whiffs of it throughout my day as I'm moving around or I, I spray it in my hair, I spray it on my clothes. You definitely have to overspray this fragrance and you can't just put it on your skin. You have to put it on your clothes for sure, but if I do that, I just don't have a problem. So I really enjoy this one and I think it's one of the best, just most inexpensive, good quality tobacco scents. If you like honeysuckle, if you like tobacco, if you like cedar and some little bit of spices in here, I think that you would absolutely love this. I just think this is such a hidden gem, to be honest, and very affordable. So that is Nirvana Amethyst by Elizabeth and James. Okay, another fragrance that I adore is by Guerlain. This is Mon Guerlain Intense. Now, I did not wear this one that much. I think I only wore it once in the month of September, which is crazy because this is one of my top 10 for life fragrances. And it really still is one of my top 10 for life fragrances. However, as I told you guys, I wanted Gourmands. This one is definitely a fall and winter perfume in my opinion. I don't think I could wear this one in the summer. So I think it's it was just the excitement of autumn coming that 
made me not want to reach for this one because I was too busy wearing my gourmands. But I am still in love with this perfume and highly recommend it. I think this is a 10 out of 10 fragrance. This is one of my favorite date night scents. Well, my husband loves this one on me and I wear it on a lot of date nights. So the performance is fantastic. This has a lot of vanilla, very strong in the vanilla. There's lavender in here, but not a lot. Like, I mean, it's not overbearing lavender. Sometimes lavender can just be too much, but I think it's blended really well in here. There's also some patchouli and licorice in the base, which I love. It makes this deep, dark, sexy. It's what makes the intense version amazing, in my opinion. I mean, I like the original, but the intense version is definitely where it's at. So anyway, I didn't wear this one that much, but I still love it, and I will probably be putting it back on my tray once the excitement of Gourmands is kind of calmed down a little bit for me. So that is by Guerlain Mon Guerlain Intense. And the exact same situation with my Chanel. This is the Chance Eau de Parfum. I really still love this fragrance, but like I said, I just wasn't in the mood for it. So we all know what this one smells like. This is pink pepper. This is a lot of jasmine. This is patchouli. It's very elegant, very classy, very sophisticated, very perfect for fall and winter because I find this to have really great performance. No issues with the performance on this one at all. I have to actually be careful not to overspray this. I think I only wore it once in September though because it's not a gourmand and I wasn't in the mood for it, but I'll be pulling this one back out soon. Like I said, once the gourmand hype kind of dies down for me, uh, but yes, this is by Chanel. This is Chance Eau de Parfum. Okay, and then one I wore a lot in September is by Jean-Paul Gaultier, and this is La Belle. So this is pear, this is vanilla, it smells like a baking, almost kind of like a booziness to it, which there's no boozy notes in here, so that, that could just be my nose, but to me it almost smells like a boozy baking pear cobbler. There are some floral notes in here, and there's leather in the mid, but I really don't pick that up at all. It's very well blended, so I am not a leather person. I really don't like leather in my fragrances, and I can usually pick it out if there's leather or suede in fragrances. I usually don't enjoy that very much, but in here I really don't smell it. I just get a lot of the pear and the vanilla. There's also vetiver in here as well, and I know some people do pick up that vetiver, but I just don't. I just get this sweet hair cobbler vanilla delicious fragrance that I love. The only thing for me for some reason is this one doesn't perform super great. It's not terrible, but so many people say this is like a beast mode on them and it's just not for me. So I wish that this lasted a little bit longer, but I still love it. All right, guys, let's get into October's tray. So the first perfume I'm putting on my tray for October is by Mugler. This is Alien Goddess Intense. I have a feeling I'm gonna go through this travel size this month because as you can see, I've already dipped into this. <laughs> I was testing it in the month of September, but really I think this should have just been on my tray because I wore this one so much. I adore this fragrance. This is so good in my opinion, and I prefer this over the OG Alien, and I do prefer this over Alien Goddess. So I bought this just to test it out, not really knowing what to expect. Since I'm not really an Alien person, the OG Alien, I can't wear it. It's too much for me. And the Goddess I found to be nice, but it it really didn't have anything to do with Alien, you know? It just smelled like a coconutty, kind of sunscreen-ish, beachy type of scent that had no Alien DNA whatsoever. The Intense version has that Alien DNA a little bit. It definitely has that Alien Jasmine in here. I think they did a really good job at listening to everybody who was complaining that, you know, hey, we don't, don't call this an Alien Flanker if you're not going to put any signs of Alien in here, you know? And so I feel like with this Flanker, they did listen and they put more Alien in but still kept it lighter. There's still coconut in here, and although this doesn't smell beachy at all, the coconut is not very strong. It just kind of adds like this creaminess. I really love this. Every time I wear this, I fall more and more and more in love with this fragrance. I think it's so good, and it's smooth. This is definitely gonna be a full bottle as soon as I go through this travel size. Another one I'm super excited to wear. I have been dying to wear this ever since I got it. This is by the House of Oud, this is Dates Delight. 
I love this perfume so much. This is such a rich, decadent, gorgeous date perfume. It smells like a date dessert. It's got honey, it's got sugar, but there's also peony in here, which kind of tones it down a little bit so it's not straight up like foodie gourmand. There's also a lot of cinnamon here. There's caramel, tonka bean, and it doesn't say that there's oud in here, but I think there's a little bit of oud in here. It definitely has that kind of like Middle Eastern touch to this fragrance for sure. I just think this is such a good fragrance. I love the bottles. I love that they're all like hand dipped, handcrafted, so nobody has the exact same bottle. I think they're really, really beautiful, and I cannot wait to wear this one. I think it's going to fit perfect for October. This one, I can't wait to wear either. This is pretty new to my collection. This is by Jean-Paul Gaultier. This is Scandal by Night. I adore the original Scandal. I'm a big, big fan. I love honey in my perfumes, and I just love that one. And that one has like blood orange and honey and licorice in the base. This one is a lot like Scandal. It has the same kind of DNA of the original Scandal, but to me, this is a little bit... I think it's because there's no licorice in the base that to me it seems a little bit more wearable. Not everybody feels that way though. I think some people think that this one's, I don't know, darker version just because it has some cherry in it. But to me, I actually find this one to be more wearable. However, it is very, very sweet. So there's cherry in here. There's a lot of honey. And the cherry to me is not medicinal at all. Thank goodness. I was really worried about that. To me, it just, it smells like a juicy yummy delicious cherry it smells like a cherry dipped in honey the performance is really good on this but to me this one isn't as strong as the original the original is like fill up a room in your face type of projection and longevity this one's still really really good but it's not quite the monster that I think the original is, at least on me. And yeah, if you're looking for a very sweet cherry honey type of fragrance, very sexy, very appropriate for date night, if you love gourmand perfumes, I think you would adore this. And yeah, I just think this is so good. I cannot wait to wear this on my next date night. Up next we have by Guerlain. This is La Petite Robe Noir Intense. So this is not the cherry fragrance that the other La Petite Robe Noirs are. This instead has blueberry. So this has blueberry and cotton candy. This one surprised me though because this isn't quite the blueberry muffin gourmand fragrance I thought it was going to be. This is more of like blueberry cotton candy meets Coco Mademoiselle. Somebody said this reminded them of uh, Sofia by Sofia Vergara and I can see that. If you took Sofia Vergara and mixed it with Coco Mademoiselle and then mixed it with some blueberry and cotton candy. That's pretty much what you're getting. <laughs> I think if you like Coco Mademoiselle and if you like Sofia by Sofia Vergara, I think you would definitely like this fragrance. I really love the blueberry and cotton candy in the opening for sure. I think it just makes it so interesting. I also love the bottle. I love the little black dress and I love the color of the juice. This blue juice is everything. And the only thing is, I've only worn this a couple of times because I just got this. Uh, I don't think the performance is super great. I think I got only about four hours the last time I wore it, so I'll have to keep you updated on that. Like I said, this is a brand new perfume. I'm not super acquainted with this one. So after October, I'll come back and let you know about the performance. I have been layering it with Bath & Body Works Blueberry Sugar Pancakes Lotion, which the combination of these two together is magic. And I, this does help to make this last a little bit longer, but still I didn't notice like a, a long, long time on this fragrance. So like I said, I'll have to keep you posted, but I do love this combination for sure. And this smells like blueberry sugar pancakes and the blueberry in here amps up the blueberry in here and it's, it's gorgeous. So love this combination. And yeah, I'll keep you posted on the performance. Okay, this next perfume absolutely has to go on my tray for October. This is my October perfume. This is my Halloween perfume. This is by Swiss Arabian. This is Casablanca. I love this perfume so much. This is such a good, affordable fragrance, you guys. In my opinion, this is one of the best perfumes you can get for the price because the performance of this is outstanding. You will not have to top this up, okay? You will spray this on. It is 
very strong and it will last you all day. This has apple and grapes in the opening, but to me, I get a lot of green apple. This also has a heavy dose of caramel in here, which I love, and it smells like a perfume version of caramel apples. It's not straight up foodie caramel apples because this also has like suede in it and it has other non gourmand notes in this fragrance. The suede is just very, it's there, I can pick it up, but it's so smooth that it doesn't bother me. It does remind me of caramel apples, but just keep in mind that this still smells like a perfume. This has white woods in it, it has some patchouli, some iris, it has suede, it has musk, so yeah, not a straight up gourmand, but there are a lot of gourmand aspects. So imagine a caramel apple that smells like a perfume. <laughs> That's what this smells like to me. I don't get a lot of the grapes, but there is a sweetness in here. Like it definitely is a sweet perfume. You have to like sweet perfumes to like this. And there's, a, like I said, a lot of caramel, a lot of amber in here as well. Reminds me of Halloween for some reason. I think it's the apple. And the apple just kind of reminds me of caramel apples, which I eat a lot of. I eat a lot of caramel apples <laughs> right now. Um, I've gone through a fair share of caramel apples already, and I also go through a lot of caramel popcorn. So I make my own caramel popcorn. I, I have microwave popcorn, and then I on the stove, I melt those like caramel candies that come in those individual wrappers. I take a bunch of those, I throw them in a pan, mix it with some butter, and then let's spread it all over my popcorn and mix it all up so it's this sweet, gooey, caramel, buttery popcorn goodness that I have to stop eating because there's a lot of calories in that. <laughs> but anyway, I'm all about caramel right now. So this is by Swiss Arabian Casablanca. Lolita Land by Lolita Limpica. I'm so excited to wear this one again. I had not worn this in a while. For some reason, all the notes in here, there's like a bazillion notes in here, but when they're all mixed together to make this concoction, it smells like root beer to me. It smells like a root beer float like a boozy root beer flow. There's Bellini in here, and I definitely pick up on that like Bellini booziness for sure. Some people get the peach that's in here. There's a lot of peach, but for some reason I pick up more of like a plum. I'm trying my hardest to get the peach out of this, but I just can't. I get more of a plummy, licorice, boozy, root beer float vibe. <laughs> It's so good. It's super sweet. So you definitely have to like sweet fragrances for sure. The performance of this is really good. This definitely lasts me all day. This is another really great affordable gourmand fragrance. And if you're into sweet fragrances, I highly recommend by Lolita Limpica Lolita Land. I'm putting my decant of Passoir by BDK on my tray. I have been testing this out since I got it, and as you can see, it just keeps going down and down because I adore this fragrance. I did not like this, well, it's not that I didn't like it when I first tried it, but it wasn't a love at first sniff for me. This was a, I don't know what I'm smelling perfume at first, like, do I like this? I don't know. I kept going back to it. I kept finding it to be incredibly interesting. It's very fruity, but also very woody and also has ginger and black pepper so it has some spiciness to it. It has like this spicy kick that I really like mixed with that sweet fruitiness and a lot of like woodiness as well. It's just such an interesting fragrance and this is why I'm starting to wonder this one and another perfume I'm about to talk about. They're very woody dominant fragrances and I'm like oh I guess I don't dislike woody notes as much as I thought I did. So anyway, this perfume surprised me. I have just kept going back to it, kept testing it out, kept trying it, and it just hit me one day that I was in love. I actually don't feel like this is a bad performing perfume either. I know a lot of people say this one doesn't perform that great on them. I've heard that from a few people, but I really just haven't had a problem with this one. I'm satisfied with the performance, so don't be surprised if you see Passoir as a full bottle in my collection in an upcoming haul video because I love this perfume. The other very woody fragrance that I have fallen head over heels for is by Zerzhoff. This is Bouquet Ideal and this is gorgeous. I fell head over heels. This was love at first sniff and my husband loves this perfume on me. This is an extremely woody fragrance but it also has a lot of vanilla in here as well and 
it is just so good you guys the top notes are cinnamon and nutmeg which I adore I love cinnamon and nutmeg oh it's so good in the middle you just have straight up woody notes you have guyac wood sandalwood and Virginian cedar and then in the base you have a lot of vanilla you have coumarin you have tobacco blossom which again I didn't think I was really the biggest fan of tobacco but it smells amazing in here it's it's a sweeter tobacco and then you have labdamum and musk in here as well I just think this smells incredible this is definitely fall in a bottle because of that cinnamon and nutmeg and mixed with the woody notes it's just sexy it's just a sexy woody vanilla tobacco cinnamon and nutmeg perfume that I find incredibly enjoyable. Again, performance is not bad on this one. I actually find this one to last a decent amount of time, about five hours. So not like, it's just moderate. It's moderate longevity, moderate projection. Not a beast or a monster, but moderate and acceptable to me. And this will be a bigger size bottle in my collection at some point once I go through this one ounce but yeah I'm really looking forward to wearing this one and like I said my husband just goes nuts over this one on me so this is by Zerzhov Bouquet Ideal this next one is so funny because I really get out of the mood for this fragrance like hardcore to the point where I don't even want to smell it like I don't even want to be around it I'm so sick of it when spring and summer come I'm just over it and that is by Zara this is Rose Gourmand so this smells exactly like Montal's Intense Cafe and Mancera's Roses Mini like right in that same vein that's what this is but at a much more affordable price and to me this is the better version like I prefer this over Roses Vini and Intense Cafe because they both have this like really sharp harsh synthetic notes that I didn't like at all but I don't pick that up in Rose Gourmand so the price you cannot beat this this is a beast beast of a fragrance just like Intense Cafe and Roses Vini are really really strong this is no different I really got out of the mood for this entire DNA like this entire I know a lot of perfumes kind of smell there's that scent profile that jammy rose ambery vanilla super sweet super jammy rose type of scent like you know there's a whole scent profile that a lot of perfumes are kind of kind of fit into that category and I was just over it. I remember when spring hit, like I said, I just didn't want anything to do with it, but I knew I was going to be in the mood for this again and I am. Like it just hit me one day, I wanted to wear this perfume. I wanted to smell it, I wanted it around me. It is a very strong, long-lasting fragrance. It is suffocating in the hot weather, but in the cooler weather months, this is gorgeous. This is when this sings and the sillage is just intoxicating. If you're like me and during the cold weather months you crave this sweet vanilla ambery type of jammy rose scent, I highly recommend by Zara Rose Gourmand. It is just so good. All right, and the last one is by Juliana's Perfumes. This is Head Over Heels. This is such a funny fragrance. I have been through it with this one. A little bit of a journey with this fragrance. I really didn't like it when I first got it. This is a dupe, by the way, for Killian rolling in love and this was gifted to me by the brand and I almost decluttered it because the opening of this is so bitter there's a lot of almond in this fragrance and it smells like like bitter almond and the bitterness is what hits me first when I first spray it but then when this starts to dry down it turns into this sweet vanilla powdery almond scent and it smells like a fluffy cloud of powdery sweet almond around you all day. I don't really care for this fragrance when I press it like too when I press it to my skin, I get too much of the bitterness and I don't really love that, but the sillage, that cloud that's around me is oh my god it's so good plus the performance on this one is really good I've heard that Killian's rolling in love the performance is not great um, this is an extra to parfum and this performs really well so if you're not happy with the performance of rolling in love maybe try head over heels and see if you prefer the performance of this one I don't have any issues with it at all I think it's really good and this is a compliment getter 
I have gotten, when I was testing this one out to determine whether or not I liked it, I got a ton of compliments on this fragrance. So I have changed my mind completely. It was, I don't like that, I'm gonna declutter it, and now I love it. So I'm so excited to wear it for the month of October. All right, you guys, and that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comment section what perfumes you're super excited to wear for October. I hope everybody is having an amazing day. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!